Thank you to LastPass for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. So today we're gonna talk again about coding boot camps. For those of you who are unfamiliar, you may ask, what are coding boot camps? Coding boot camps are short and intensive programs to learn software engineering skills with the ultimate goal of getting a job. They're a great accelerated way to get into software engineering without needing to go through a four-year degree program at a university. They vary in duration, but typically are around 12 weeks long and demand about 40 to 60 hours a week of work. That was from a previous video where I talk about what coding boot camps are. If you haven't watched it already, I'll leave a link in the card right above. So today, we're specifically gonna be talking about how to choose a coding bootcamp. Deciding to go to one is already a big life decision. So choosing which one to attend is a huge first step, and there's a lot of things to consider. I've actually never gone through the experience myself, so I interviewed a few people who did to give insight on the important factors to consider when choosing a bootcamp. And before we dive right in, I wanted to say thank you to LastPass for sponsoring this portion of the video. So I hope we all know that in order to peruse the internet in a safe and secure way, you're supposed to use different passwords for every single site that you log into. Well, LastPass relieves the burden of generating and remembering those passwords. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. LastPass also autofills your credentials on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open open an app or site, LastPass will fill in your username and password for you, making it fast and easy to log in. Features include unlimited password storage, free cross-device sync, and password sharing. So click the link below and start using LastPass today. Thank you to LastPass for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now let's get back to coding bootcamps. So first, let's talk about bootcamps in 2020. According to a few market reports about boot camps, they have campuses in over 85 cities across the United States and Canada. 83% of boot camp grads report being employed in programming jobs. The average starting salary is around $67,000 across the United States, which varies a lot depending on your location. On average, the tuition for in-person boot camps is around $13,500, and they're about 15 weeks long. And finally, online boot camps have seen enormous growth of about 171%, which I imagine is even more now because of COVID-19. So are coding boot camps still a viable solution for changing careers into technology? Well, the statistics show that the number of boot camp graduates are increasing year over year. So most boot camps really aren't going anywhere anytime soon. But on an individual basis, I've learned that it really depends on your personal situation. Personally, like I think it comes down to opportunity cost. I think nowadays there's a lot of online resources. So if you're extremely disciplined and maybe you've been doing this for the last six months and you could see yourself improving week over week and month over month, I would say go as far as you can using online free resources. The biggest thing is to consider is how do you get get a job in tech the quickest, right? So if you can do it on your own using online resources, great, that could be a great option for you. But if studying on your own is, is gonna result in you spending 12 to 18 months struggling, you're probably better off doing a part-time course or self-paced course that's six months long. Even if you get a job three months quicker than doing online, that opportunity cost of getting paid three months earlier will already pay for itself. So that's kind of like how I would think about like whether to do it online for free or whether to sign up for a bootcamp if you're finding yourself where you're getting stuck a lot, in those cases, boot camps do help because they give you that structure. You also see other people around you struggling, which is actually, I think, super underrated because when you're learning on your own, you might be struggling. You think you're the, the only person that's having these issues. And I think that's closely linked to the imposter syndrome as well, where you think this is only happening to you, but everyone else around you is fully on top of their game. Once you actually do a boot camp, you realize that everyone has a hard time, everyone struggles, but that's part of that journey. So once you figure out that it's the right solution for you, how do you go about choosing which one to attend? Well, one of the most important factors to consider is to think about how you're going to sustain yourself while you attend the boot camp. Like, what's your lifestyle going to be like? Do you need to keep making income while you're attending or do you have a savings that you can lean on? Can you afford your living expenses, especially if you're going to move to a new city? And how many hours a week can you devote to the boot camp? With a lot of folks in Career Karma, they're opt opting in for either part-time or self-paced, especially for working adults, very few people can take three months off to just do a boot camp. 
So if you're going to be doing a part-time option, figure out whether it's going to be nights and weekends or if it's going to be more self-paced and flexible, because that's going to make a difference. If you're going to be signing up for, for the next six to 12 months to do a boot camp, make sure that you're not overstretching yourself. And especially if you have kids and family, you want to make sure that you're balanced and you could actually complete it. And then talking about commitment, like, can you actually commit to this doing this boot camp? Because I know there's a lot of people in the boot camp, they think they're able to do it. And then they come into the boot camp and they're like, whoa, this is like a lot of work. Definitely, if you have the time, then do it. If you don't have the time, I would kind of reconsider. You will be spending a lot of late nights doing doing a bunch of research they're not there to teach you everything they're there to teach you how to get that information you know how to google is definitely like the number one skill for boot camp and one of the big factors around this decision is to think about what city you want to attend the boot camp in now i know we're in kind of a weird time because of covid19 but pre-pandemic boot camps were most plentiful in areas that have a tech hub like san francisco or new york city it's not uncommon for people to move to these tech hubs just to attend boot camps, since it's likely gonna be where they'll find jobs too. But for some, a big move or a commute to one might not make sense. Are you able to like go out of your way to like go to this boot camp? Like if it's like an hour away, but you live in SoCal, that's gonna be probably like two hours instead. Like, is this worth it for you? Is it worth it to drive every day to your boot camp? Like, can you can you do that? Can you commit to that? So I looked at some other ones um, like Hack Reactor, General Assembly. The downside with that one was it was too far for me. I lived in Anaheim, SoCal traffic is like horrendous. So I didn't want to drive all the way to LA for Hack Reactor or Assembly or like Pomona. So that was kind of out of the question for me. But I learned, interestingly, that it might be to your advantage to attend a boot camp that's not in a tech hub. What we're finding is that people in secondary like tech markets are actually having an easier time finding a job because there's less competition. A lot of companies are open to hiring junior talent, whereas the main markets like San Francisco, New York, LA, Chicago, there is more saturation of bootcamp grads looking for applying for jobs. So then you have to do more to stand out in your interview processes. Another big factor to consider, which impacts your lifestyle, is the cost of the bootcamp. Because bootcamps are not cheap. They might range anywhere from $2,000 to $30,000. So a lot of people don't have that kind of big money lying around. But the good news is, each bootcamp has different offerings on how you can pay. You can always pay upfront in cash, but there's some creative financing options that enable you to afford it without breaking the bank. One of the common ones is deferred payments. That's where you don't need to pay the bootcamp until you get your first job. There's also income sharing, where a bootcamp takes a percentage of maybe your first one to three years worth of your salary. The cool things about income sharing is that there's minimum salary requirements. So if you don't make above a certain threshold, you don't have to pay even if you get your job. Most ISAs have a maximum you'll have, you'll have to pay out, and usually it's about 30,000. So for most schools, you're not gonna pay more than 30K, even if you're making 200,000 as your first job. But overall, ask your Bootcamps if they have living stipends, that's something that has uh, come up. And if you live in Atlanta, I think San Francisco, Denver, you might be eligible for some living stipends. So ask your bootcamp if they have that. Tuition for UCI, is, you can do it multiple ways. You can pull out a loan. You go through that whole loan process and you have multiple ways to pay off your loan. And, or you can pay monthly. UCI's program was around 12,000. What I learned from my other bootcamp members was that some of them already have like career jobs. And then some of their companies are actually willing to invest in them be like, hey, if you want to do this boot camp, you can do it. Once you complete it, um, just show your certificate and then we'll pay for like half of it. Depending on what your starting salary is, if you choose something like income sharing, then it can determine how much money you end up paying back to the bootcamp. Look at the market you're in, because if you're in a competitive market and there's a lot, there are a lot of companies hiring and maybe the average salaries are like within the range where even if you're paying back a percentage of your income, you're still going to be in a solid middle class bracket. I think that makes sense. But with some um, markets, if you're going to be making a, 50k or 55k if that's the average and then you have to factor in that you're going to be paying an additional 15 20 percent income sharing before tax that might be pretty burdensome so you should definitely look into your average salary rates when you're evaluating the boot camps one thing to note though if you choose the financing option is that boot camps will perform background and credit checks on you to make sure that you can pay them back if you're going to be doing financing boot camps have different background check requirements and credit history requirements we we recommend people to apply to at least two to three different schools. There's folks that apply to one school, they're super excited, and then they get turned
turned down because they have maybe they have like a late payment on a loan from six six years ago. We tell them not to give up because every school has their own uh, credit requirements and. If you don't get into one, there's probably at least one or two other boot camps that will accept you. Now, after you figured out some of the big factors that go into deciding a boot camp, it's time to do some more in-depth research to find out what the actual experience will be like. You might be able to find a lot of information on a boot camp website, but boot camp grads recommend that you talk to past attendees to get the real scoop on how it was. Doing your research on these boot camps, like understanding what they give. I've had a lot of people reach out to me on LinkedIn, like just asking about the boot camp. If you can't find any more resources on the website itself, then reach out for people on LinkedIn. See if they put their school in their LinkedIn, just reach out to them, ask them like, hey, like, what did you think about this boot camp? Do you think it was worth it? And then if you can't get more information, like just call the school, ask them like, you know, can I get a curriculum? Can you give me more information? I'm really highly considering this. I just want more information. And they'll more than likely give you the information. They'll give you, like for me, they gave me the curriculum and they went into detail. Like this is what you're gonna be doing across these weeks. And this is what you're gonna learn. If this is something that you wanna do, then sign up. Uh, so I, I mainly asked them, you know, how was the job searching process after attending the bootcamp? Yeah, and I asked them, you know, how long it took them to find a job, what it was like if they, if the bootcamp offered you any services for help you know people were really open about sharing their experiences so what might you ask when you're talking to past boot camp grads well one important thing could be job placement each boot camp may or may not offer some job placement help after all the coursework is done from resume reviews to networking events to interview prep but what's important is whether you're actually able to land a job afterwards at all a lot of my statistics i looked up are kind of placement rates for those specific boot camps and also average salary coming out of those boot camps because i knew that if i was going to be spending this much money i wanted to definitely see results or maybe it's the network and prestige that get you more opportunities there were other boot camps around Irvine too that I looked into, but it didn't seem like it was as prestigious. When I was talking to the UCI person, they were like, yeah, this is a fairly new program, but once you complete it, you're going to be part of like the UCI network, which I am now, because when you put that on your, on your LinkedIn, a lot of people are going to like look you up from Irvine. Now, the last two factors to consider are around learning styles. Each bootcamp runs their program a little differently and hires their own instructors to teach the class. Some bootcamps are all online while others meet in person. We always recommend folks to consider like the, the teaching style and your personal learning style and make sure that that corresponds. Some folks prefer in-person instruction. Some folks are more free spirit and like to do things remotely. Definitely like as you're evaluating bootcamps, check out if they have an online option available or if they have in-person only classes so that's usually a big factor and while most boot camps have some sort of interview process to admit you into the program some don't have a screening process at all which means that anyone is welcome but the coursework might not be as rigorous as you want it to be a downside with, with some of these boot camps is that there's no like screening process you know i know certain programs they have a screening process to to see like are you going to be able to do this with my boot camp there were, there was no screening process so we did have people like they had no background in tech whatsoever and they kind of just like wanted to jump into this we kind of had to cater to them a bit so like the pace kind of slowed down and we couldn't cover as much as we could don't get me wrong like like it's it's totally cool like it was just a downside because like there are some of us in the boot camp that are a little bit more advanced and we wanted to really get like an accelerated course and get to learn more and more and more so there you have it all the important factors on deciding which boot camp to attend thank you to our guests david arthur and jason for being on the channel and sharing their experiences today. If you attended a boot camp, then let me know what your experiences have been and what advice you have for others in choosing a boot camp in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.